next speaker is uh, Zi Sheng Yang from the CS department here at UIUC. Alright, so I will thank Yang for introducing the new network and uh, mentioning and I want to draw your attention from the speech recognition to the image recognition in the computer vision. So I'm trying to propose a hierarchical net for the task of the image. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. <coughs> Sorry, I just uh, actually finished the uh, thesis defending this morning, so I <coughs> cannot speak very loudly after two hours. You know? <laughs> okay, I try to speak as loudly as possible. Um, the problem is, the, given the input image, I want to uh, identify the label of the most salient object in the image. And in the realistic image, there can be more than one object appearing in the image. So uh, we allow the classifier to give five guesses. All right. This is the problem. And the intuition is, let's start with a motivating example. Assume we have four categories, like apple, orange, bus, and a train. And visually, the apple image are quite similar to orange images, but the apple image is quite different from the bus images. So that's the intuition. I mean, it's easy to separate apple from the bus, but it's hard to separate the bus from the train. So that means the visual separability between different categories is not even. So how about grouping those categories into some cost category? For example, grouping apple and the orange into fruit, and the grouping bus and the train into transportation vehicle. And after that, for each cost category, all the fun categories within it are quite confusing to each other, and we want to chain a specialized expert classifier for that cost category. And once I define, I define n cost categories, I want to chain n specialized classifier. So given a test image with ground truth label, for example, apple, if I know it is mostly from the fruit cost category, I can use the specialized classifier for the fruit and do the classification, and I expect the performance will be better than a general purpose classifier. So that's why we call it a hierarchical classifier. And uh, we depends on the category hierarchy. Yes. I have the fun category. Uh, labels at the fine levels, but those cost categories are learned from the data. They are not predefined. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let's assume we can learn the category from the data. I will introduce the learning step later. So the visual category hierarchy can be embedded into a tree structure. So the root node can represent everything. And it's a very simple two-level hierarchy. Each leaf node represents a cost category. And in each cost category, I simply group those fun categories. And you can see from the images, those fun categories within the same cost category are very visually similar to each other. And they are very challenging to separate one from other. And our idea is, once I train a specialized classifier for each leaf node, that's for each uh, cost category, and I, in the system, I have overall a single cost category classifier. Tell me, given the test image, that particular specialized classifier is most relevant. I should give more credit to its prediction. So I can use the cost category probability as the weight and compute a weighted sum of all the predictions from expert classifier. So it's a very simple way to combine all the predictions from experts but with different weights and the confidence. 
and put this idea into the deep convnet. So deep convnet is surprisingly successful for the image classification. And uh, how can we build up a hierarchical net? Assume I have a baseline deep net. So first, the image is fed into a, a bunch of shared layer, and a shared layer extracting some low-level features. And those low-level features are routed along two passes. The first pass, it is received by the cost component. Cost component give cost predictions over the cost categories. And also, along another pass, low-level features are also accept, are received by fun, fun, fun components. Each fun component will give us a fun prediction. And the layer configuration, each fun component are identical, but the parameters are trained using different training data. So they represent different experts. And in the final step, we just calculate a, com a weighted sum, combining all the predictions from the experts, giving them different weights, and we can get a final prediction. So this is the idea of the hierarchical deep net. So let's start with a baseline net. So in the top, this is the 16 layer deep cover net, and it's the winning entry of the image net challenge in year 2014. It has basically 16 layers, and what we do is we choose a splitting position, cut the net into two halves, and all the layers on the left side are used as the shared layer. All the layers on the right side get replicated at both cost component and the fund components. It's very time consuming to design a specific arrangement of the layers. How many neurons should we put in the each layer? So why, when we build up the HDCN, we want to start with a baseline, so we don't have to fine tune the layer configurations. We choose the splitting position, cut it into two halves, and use the layers on the left as shared layer, use the layers on the right side, uh, and get replicated in both cost and fun components. So the HDCN can be conveniently developed in this way. And uh, we propose to learn the cost categories from the data, assume the data set is not associated with any specific hierarchy. And we know the goal is we want to group the fund categories into cost categories. And it's actually can be boiled down as a clustering problem. We want to cluster fund categories into each cluster. Each cluster represents a cost category. And then we want to employ the spectral clustering. And the input is from the confusion matrix that is obtained from the validation set. So if you have N categories, and you get a confusion matrix of size M by N, and each matrix element tells you the confusion score between the category I and the category J. So it's very intuitive. Spectral clustering takes a distance matrix, a distance matrix element to measure the dissimilarity between the matrix, between the categories. So confusion matrix and the distance matrix actually are complement to each other, so we can easily transform the confusion matrix into the distance matrix. And the result of the spectral clustering is a disjoint uh, um, hierarchy. It's a mapping from the fund category to the cost category. And uh, we further propose um, disjoint cost category is not as good as overlapping uh, cost category. And we further add more fund category to each cost category. I will demonstrate advantage of doing this in the experiments. All right, so we have the architecture of the hierarchical net. So let's change it. Because it has replicated the fun components, and uh, each, actually the baseline have uh, parameters on the order of several millions. And in this big HDCN, we probably have over like 10 million parameters, and uh, we are not going to change it completely at the first place. So we take a component-wise training strategy so we for the for the layers uh, for the weights in the shared layer and the cost component, we copy the parameters from a pre-trained baseline net. For each fun component, if you connect it with the shared layer, it itself will become a complete classifier, 
and it's classified over a subset of the five categories. And we can chain it. Once we fix the weights in the shared layer, only chain the weights in the fun components, all the fun components can be chained in parallel. And finally, if the computational cost allows, and we can fine tune the complete HDCN for more few iterations. At the testing stage, we focus on the scalability of this job net. Basically, we want to speed up the execution and uh, reduce the memory for the print. So for the conditional execution, which aims to reduce the execution time, we notice for a particular test image, like Apple, maybe only a few cost category are relevant. That means only a small number of fun components are relevant. Their prediction are useful, but for the, red, for the remaining fun components, their prediction can be ignored because our cost category classifier will give pretty tidy weights for them. For the layer uh, parameter compression, which can reduce the memory for the print, uh, we notice the parameters in each layer consume a majority of the memory. And in both convert layer and the fully connected layer, the parameters can be represented as the matrices. So we want to compress the matrix. And we choose a simple technique called product quantization. So simply speaking, treat each matrix law as a feature vector, perform k-means on them. And after that, you can represent each matrix law using a single cluster ID that is a single digit. All right, so uh, this is the part of the model. So let's evaluate the model on two data sets. The first data set is a small data set called CIFA 100. That is, it has 60,000 image for chaining and testing and has 100 fun categories. It also defines uh, 10 cost categories uh, from the word semantics, but we assume we don't have it. We compare the HDCN with the baseline net. The baseline net is a small combo net called CIFA 100 NIN. The basic uh, intuition and observation is with HDCN, we can improve the performance by 3%. And if we enable the conditional execution and the memory compression, our uh, computational cost can be saved a lot, but the error is just rebounced a little bit. I will introduce the computational cost, such as the execution time and the memory consumption in a separate slice. And we'll also compare with the other methods. So basically, the computational cost of the HDC is two times as much as the baseline. So to make the comparison fair, so we, when we compare the model averaging, it's actually averaging over uh, two separately chained baseline nets. So we choose the number of the baseline to be two, so make the comparison fair. All right, so uh, on this small data set, we can do some internal investigation. For example, uh, when we learn the hierarchy, we run the k-means to infer the number of cost categories. So the number of cost category is actually controlled by the k, and we can uh, actually investigate what is the optimal number for the cost category. And by our experiment, we find out nine cost categories give us the best performance. And this happens to be close to the uh, inherent definition of the cost category, which has number 10. And then we also find that this joint cost category works not as good as the overlapping cost category. The reason for explaining this phenomenon is if the uh, fun category only appears in one cost category, that means there's only one expert classifier taking care of it. If that classifier is making a mistake, so we have no chance to correct it. But if that fun category appears in more than one cost categories, so we have more expert classifier to do this. So it's the spirit of the ensemble uh, learning classification. So let's uh, do the final experiment on the ImageNet data set. It is the very famous and the most challenging data set. has like about one million image and 1,000 categories. And we take a weaker baseline 
cut the net into two halves and build up the HDCN, and we can improve the performance by 3%. So 3% uh, is actually a very substantial improvement for the image net data set. And uh, let's do a case study. So numbers is not telling you the whole story. So when the baseline is making a mistake, how the HDCN can make a correct prediction? We basically find out that there are two scenarios. So in this plot, the first colon is the input image. The second colon is the top five prediction from the baseline. The third colon is the top five prediction from the cost category classifier. So they are actually weights for averaging. The next three columns is the prediction from the top three expert classifier. And the last one is the final average the prediction. So baseline is always making mistake in, in, the, in the two examples. And for the first example, the hermit crab is actually ranked at the first place in our expert classifier. And when you do the averaging, because that expert classifier gets a very high weights, so it's dominating the final prediction. So in the first scenario, a top expert classifier making a correct prediction, and it's dominating the final prediction. In the second scenario, the ground truth label digital clock is not ranked at uh, the first place by any expert classifier. But when we do the averaging, we can see the digital clock is uh, ranked the, at the first place. So this is spirit of ensemble classification. We rely on more than one expert classifier. All right, so the last experiment is we uh, evaluate uh, on the image net, but we use a very strong baseline, the VGD 16 layer baseline, which is the winning uh, entry for the image net challenge. And uh, we are able to improvement, uh, improve the performance by 1%. All right, so the last piece is uh, we observe the improved accuracy, but what, are the, what is the actual uh, cost I pay for that? So basically, I put uh, three sections in this, into this table, comparing the memory consumption and the execution time between the baseline and the HDCN. So for example, in the first uh, part, the memory consumption increased by uh, less than two times. Execu execution time is increased by less than three times, and we get 3% improvement. So HDCN provides a solution and a trade-off between the efficiency and the accuracy. All right, so to summarize the uh, paper, so it's proposing a novel hierarchical net architecture, and uh, it proposed a simple way to learn the visual category hierarchy. For training, we can train all the components in parallel. For testing, we can reduce the execution time and uh, reduce the memory footprint by using the two techniques here. Uh, this concludes my talk. Thank you. Uh, I will look at the, uh, if you, uh, every layer doing execution, and uh, most, uh, for the lower layers, the computational cost is higher. For the uh, higher layers, the computational cost is lower. And for the layers on the right side, it gets replicated. So the computational cost will be linearly scaled up. So you want to make sure if you, spend the 50% computational cost on the right side, and you replicate it by 10 times, and overall the computational cost will increase by five times. And you have to make a choice if you can afford this computational cost increase. Uh, we can uh, specifically calculate, break down the computational cost for each layer, and figure out, okay, this layer consume 10%, this layer consume 5%, can we have a numerical idea? Okay, the overall computational cost, the right side part is consuming. So we can calculate it. Yes, in general, so um, in general, um, usually we, we want to see, say, um, please uh, keep a significant number of layers on the right side because they are get replicated and parameters in those five components will be different. If you only have one layer on the right side, the difference between different five components will be quite limited. That means 
all the experts classifier may be behavior very similar to each other. So you don't have greater difference or diversity between the fun component expert classifier. This is not a good thing for our model. So in the extreme case, if all the layers, uh, if all the layers are replicated and there is no shared layer, and the whole model just decreases back to the simple model average, right? Thank you very much. So now we have a minutes break.